Hi there, this video is all about what is high performance and ways in which we can culture it in our life. My name is Steve Ingham from Supporting Champions and this channel is all about developing performance strategies that can help your fitness, your team working and your productivity. And so in this video, I want to explore what's the difference between performance and high performance. And if we can understand that definition, then we're probably going to be equipped with a few principles that can guide us as to how we might be able to culture that in our life. And that's what I want to share with you in this video. All right, so quick story for you then. So I was in town the other day and I was picking up a couple of bits and pieces, bobbing from one shop to the next. And I remembered, oh no, I need to get some screws because I'm doing a bit of a DIY project in the garden at the moment. I, I thought I'd pop into some screws. And rather than making a detour, to my normal DIY shop, um, I, th I popped into a shop called Wilco. And if you're from the UK, you know what Wilco is all about. It's, it's a crazy shop. It's got a bit of everything in it from frames to sofas to paint to everything. And I thought I'd go and try and find some screws. And sure enough, they had a, a little bank of, of, of screws that I could go and have a little look to see if I could find the right type. And something caught my eye immediately as I was looking down at the, the different options available. And I saw a packet and it said high performance screws. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what makes them high performance. So I picked up a pack and I had a little scan about to look for the standard performance screws, the standard screws that would just do any old regular job rather than the high performance screws. And I couldn't see any. So I'd assumed to a certain extent that the high performance screw might give me something extra. It might be able to perform at a higher level. It might be stronger, whether that's the torsional strength or the axial strength that the screw has to perform along that might allow me to build a structure that, that's just stronger. Without wanting to flog this particular observation is that my assumption is that these are just called high performance. So the screw didn't provide any particular added benefit that could actually justify the term. It's just a bit of marketing, a bit of branding that means they sound good. I think that we can fall into a bit of a trap where we're overly referring to high performance, high performance all the time, aspiring to high performance. And once we get there, it's just something that is just on all the time. And so there's quite a simple definition of what performance is, and that's the action or the process of performing a task or function. So it's sort of like you're just, just doing something. And so it has no particular clauses that can allow us to differentiate between high performance and performance. You're just doing the task or the function. And so here's my definition of high performance, the action or process of performing a given task to an exceptional level or under exceptional demand or circumstance. And so if we understand that particular definition of an actual process of performing a task or a function at an exceptional level or under exceptional demand or circumstance, then we let's take the word as our first principle, the exceptionality of something. So to meet the criteria of high performance, one way in which you might do that is in the performance. It's at an exceptional level. And that means that if we were to line everybody up of being able to perform that particular task, that somebody's able to do it at a level that is a high percentile of what is possible. And the second part of that exceptionality is about the demand. So what's the workload that somebody's experiencing? That could be the actual, the actual task in itself is, is intense or the lack of recovery. That means that somebody is having to work under significant demand. So what are the circumstances, whether that's environmental or the expectations or the pressures that somebody's experiencing, whether those are internal or external, and so we can think about the performance level, we can think about the demand that somebody might be under, and then we can think about the circumstances under which you're operating. Each of those can map or increase the high performance requirement. So effectively, what we have is some exclusion criteria. So if it's performed at a, a normal level or a regular level, if it's under typical circumstances or demand, then it doesn't really fulfill the criteria of high performance. So have, let's go through a couple of examples. It could be rock climbing. Now that carries some risk with it. 
but an exceptional level would be rock climbing and summiting Everest because you've got risk, you've got environment, you've got circumstances, and it requires you to be operating physically at a high level. So the difference between flying a plane, which in itself requires some skill, or being an astronaut and going to the space station, the difference in terms of risk, environment, complexity, and skill required, and also physical demand, is completely different. One is something we experience every day going on flight, and another is an exceptional high performance movement. The difference between us driving our car or motor racing in Formula One, the risk, the speed, the demand, the skills that are required are exceptional. And the difference for an athlete of competing internationally, which in itself demands respect, but also going to the Olympics. The Olympics are rare, they're infrequent. There is additional expectation and hype and perception about that, which means that they are going to be in that high performance category. And so this brings me to my next principle, and that is about the frequency and the regularity of which you're performing a given task. If it's performed commonly, if it's something you do day to day, it's performing a task. And let's not get confused here with being skillful at a particular task or function. And so by definition, high performance can't happen all the time. And if you think this through, this makes absolute sense. So we are biological, organic beings. And the important thing here is that we operate in rhythms some tiny rhythms, some longer rhythms through the day, across days, across months, and across years, and across our, our seasons, and across our lifetimes. These are the organic rhythms that dictate how we perform. And unless we appreciate those, we're not going to get the best out of ourselves. So some of these rhythms we're going to be really familiar with, such as waking up, going to sleep. And that, that is our circadian rhythm. Some of them we're going to take for granted. So hormonal secretions that go on during the day that mean that we will be experiencing different states at different times. Some are really blindingly obvious, such as blinking or the beat of our heart. And some will arc all the way across a monthly cycle, whether that's menstrual cycle or seasonality. We'll respond differently to how the seasons are affecting us. One such example is the ultradian rhythm, which moves within a day. It's about a 90 minute cycle in total, and it's, it's most commonly researched in sleep, where you'll have periods of wakefulness and deeper sleep, for example. But this happens during our day too. We've had periods of time when we are what's called aroused, high levels of arousal, periods when we are on and periods when we are off on, switched on, focused, lots of energy, and other times when actually it's, it's more natural for us to be resting and recovering. And it takes more effort and more energy in order for us to deliver at a higher level of performance. And the main point here is that we can have periods when we are stepping up. We're stepping up heightened performance to allow us to perform at a higher level of the task or the function under different levels of demand or exceptional circumstances. But when we up our performance, we need to make sure that we're complementing that with deeper recovery and restoration. And you'll recognize this if you've gone and done something stressful, if you've worked or if you've performed or if you've competed at a high level, if it has been nerve wracking, it's been demanding, or you've really given your physical all, you'll need to make sure that you're resting. You'll do that naturally because you're shattered. You know, and we know this because an astronaut doesn't just jump out of the shuttle at the end and do a high five and a skip and a jump. They get taken out of the shuttle in a wheelchair. They've experienced exceptional physical demand or under exceptional demand and exceptional circumstances. And it means that they have to now recover. The Olympian will compete and at the end of their season, they will rest and recover and allow their body and their mind to reset. The climber returning from Everest will be, have experienced cardiac strain. They'll be emaciated and that will require them to take time to recuperate and recover after that high demand. And so we also know that if we're trying to sustain higher levels of performance on a continued basis, maybe for weeks or months at a time, we, if we're going to perform at our best, we know that we have to be meticulous and deliberate 
about investing in recovery and restorative processes too. So I know that when I go to an Olympic Games and I'm experiencing that pressure, that demand, and it requires me to perform at my best to support athletes to their best, I know that I have to be much more deliberate about how I'm sleeping, the fuel that's going in my body, the, the things that I'm eating so I have good energy, um, taking time out to switch off mentally, whether that is relaxation techniques or, or just getting away, going, uh, going out there and having a walk and switching off mentally, as well as staying fit. And each of those can ensure that when the stresses come, when the demand comes, that I'm in a much better place physiologically and mentally to be able to weather that demand. And this is true for the astronaut when they're at the space station. They have to be meticulous about what they're eating. They have to undertake physical exercise so that physically they're in the best place possible. And the same is true for an Olympian who, or a, an athlete who has to sustain their performance over a given period of time they will benefit from investing in their sleep, making sure that they're fueling properly, switching off mentally and finding ways to relax. And the final principle around high performance is to recognize that if performance is an action or process of a given task, and higher performance is that exceptional level, exceptional demand or circumstances, you've also got to recognize that, that we can perform in a variety of different ways that could be physically, that could be mentally, could be emotionally, could be socially. And several of those different factors could combine. So the psychosocial demand, or it could be the emotional, physical demand that somebody is under. And so what we need to do is accept and therefore work skillfully with this understanding that as emotive, complex beings, we can't necessarily compartmentalize the effect that a physical demand might be upon us emotionally. We, we're not computers where separate apps or programs are operating in isolation from each other. And so understanding physically, we might not be able to produce the same level in training. We might not have the same level of energy if we're under specifically high emotional demand at a given time. If we're sleep deprived, we might be more hungry the next day. We might feel a bit down because of that. And so understanding that we're integrated beings, if we want to perform at a high level, we've got to work with those principles. Principles of being on, but also off. The take home message from this video is that high performance is not something that you can do all day, every day. If you're trying to do that, it's probably going to be just performance. If anything, if you're neglectful of how you're performing, how engaged you are, as well as the opportunities for rest and recovery. It's probably that your performance is going to actually go down. And so if you're just falling into this trap of thinking, but high performance all the time, go, 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 it's likely that your the effectiveness, how much energy you've got, how you engage with each other, and how productive you're actually being actually goes down. I hope you can take these ideas and be a little bit more selective and intentional particularly around the expectations that we have upon ourselves. Just be a little bit more focused about when and how you're stepping up and making sure that you're doing that in a healthy way by meeting that demand with increased recovery. So anyway, about these screws, uh, turns out I don't really need high performance screws. Um, it wasn't under any particular demand. They didn't need to be exceptional. They weren't experiencing heavy loads. They just needed to stick together two bits of wood to mend my shed. So that in itself is a bit of a lesson for us. We don't always need that high performance. We don't always need to be going that extra mile. But when we do, we need to make sure that we've got the right conditions that support it. If you want to find out a little bit more about how I got into high performance and the key lessons that I took from working with the best athletes in the world, then take a look at the video on screen. Thanks for watching.